And we're back. Listen, huh. let's talk about films. Today on Best of the Worst, we are watching three films from previous filmmakers who have appeared on Best of the Worst. Oh, so is this a sequel show or just a filmography show? Mm, I, I, I don't think it, one of the films is definitely a sequel. Uh, so it's a little bit of both. Okay. Our first film, uh -huh. which Jack, yeah. you are responsible for. The McNamara brothers are back. Yes, they're definitely not gay. You should read this one because you are the one who found the original Twin Dragon Encounter. Yes. Uh, in a thrift store. In Minnesota. And we eventually watched it and got a little uncomfortable watching them ride on three wheelers. They were in love with each other. And I think they will continue to be in love with each other in the sequel, but that's just a guess. The ultimate game of survival. The twin dragons, Michael and Martin McNamara. Dragon hunt. Do, 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 do. do you remember how the first film ended? The first film ends with them forgetting their girlfriend because they never really loved them in the first place. Subtext. And then the bad guy flies away on an airplane. Ah, uh, oh, we have camouflage and guns. We have punks and babes in cages and more punks and guns. For all the things Canada has to be embarrassed of, this might be the worst. Mm -hmm. Madman Jake and his people's private army set the captured twins loose on an island with vicious killers hot on their trail. So apparently they are captured at one point, but then set loose on an island of vicious killers. Outnumbered and outgunned, the twins are in trouble. Mick and Martin are the underdogs, but they have a reputation to fight to their last breath. The hunters become the hunted as the game takes a deadly turn. The world champion kickboxing twins leap into action in Dragon Hunt. Uh, I suppose like the the big question for me is how are they going to up the ante because we saw lots of fighting We saw a little bit of guns and a fair bit of three-wheeling. I'm gonna say they didn't film the action in ultra slow motion Remember the fights in the first one they lasted about a second and they were awkward And yeah. so they, they they went back and they slowed everything down. Yeah. I'm gonna guess that they maybe improved on the cinematic uh, 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 execution of the fights okay. because that was the, the the big fail of the first one. They had a camera and they locked it down and then they went and then some people fell down and then they said the the fight scene lasted four seconds. Right. Well, uh, this is not real. We'll slow it down. Then the fight scene will last twenty five seconds. Right. Yeah. And that's it, not such a good experience for the audience. And I, you know. I'm going to give them points here because they did find a clever way to shoot at night. Uh, yeah. And, and boy, oh boy, are these fight scenes much better than the first film. <laughs> Even if they're not so great. I, I think they learned a little bit about like a real fight versus what a movie fight should yeah, look like. Yeah, there's, there's camera cuts, there's different yeah, angles. Yeah, It's not just one wide shot. Right. We have a bad filmmaker that actually learned a lesson. Oh! Yeah! Oh my God, it's too much. Cut, cut. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like that's fair. I think they're gonna have a bazooka. Okay, is there one on the back of the box? There's not one on the back of the box, but that's my guess is they're gonna have a bazooka and they will bazooka something. Each other? Is that a sex act? There's no one here. Oh. It's just me and you today, Jack. Is that, is that a sex act? Yeah. Nice. Uh, my other guess- That's where the name Bazooka Joe comes from. Let's go around the corner, give you a Bazooka Joe. Mm -hmm. hmm, I like it. I like it. It came from World War II. Oh, really? That's what all the, like, the, the prostitutes in, in Japan would call the U.S. So sailors, Bazooka Joes. Oh. Because they would blast them in the face. With bazookas. That's true. No, oh, with, the, with their bazookas. It's true. And then they called the chewing gum that, and little did they know, thousands, millions of little kids were putting Bazooka Joes in their mouth. Oh, but that was like sailor semen. Yeah. It's true history. Semen, semen. Look it up on Wackapedia. <laughs> that's, that's the internet database for perverts. That was, that was a long 
setup. Pretty decent joke. Let's go watch Dragon Hunt. It should be called Twin Dragon Hunt. It's just Dragon Hunt. Yeah. They, they're they ignoring the twin, the twin aspect. They're not, they're right here. I mean, it says the twin dragons are back or right. whatever, but it should be called Twin Dragon Encounter, Twin Dragon Hunt. This was before, this was before the, bef before the era of colons. Okay. <laughs> All right. Although, well, <laughs> not for them. <laughs> I, I think this is supposed to be funny. So Mike, we're back. What's next? What's next is Juan Fernandez in I can't read it. Tartar sauce. Tartar. Tartar. Tartarus. Tartarus. Oh, this is more legible. Oh, okay. Tartarus. Tartarus. Is a Tartarus a thing? But this is a film by Dave Waskovich. Oh, uh, no. The director of one of the most famous movies ever, Suburban Sasquatch. Oh, no. No. Yes, we have quite a collection of Dave Waskovich films, probably four or five of them. Do we? Yeah. yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. No! I don't know if it's going to be as good as Suburban Sasquatch, what is, but we can at least give it a shot. Great. Oh my god, he really is on a spacecraft. <laughs> yes! <laughs> he escaped! It was all just on an alien spacecraft. Cosmic justice is served. Uh, tortured by evil. Haunted by demons. Tartarus has been opened. Walk the line between heaven and hell. Oh my god. <laughs> but like eventually we need a plot, right? No. <laughs> Remember where you are. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's just jello. Oh, the old brain in a pie tin. <laughs> <laughs> it's just jello. Tartarus is the infernal regions of ancient Greek mythology. Oh, okay. So it's like Greek hell. Like Hades? Yeah. Or, or, uh, okay. All the, all the under the, okay. the infernal regions. See, now I feel so uncultured. <laughs> John is on the run, escaping ellipses, but to where? Demons and evil surround him. Aliens torturing him. Well, he's getting it from all ends. Taunting him. But his only allies are those that he does not believe he can trust. Trying to escape his past was his biggest mistake. Wow, this is really vague. Where madness and death live. Great. Let's go to the dental chair and remove that Tartarus. Like in the plaque, turns to tartar. What is it? Wow, what you say? A UFO, that ship, they're wobbling! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, guys. Faster, faster! It's a UFO! It can presumably go faster than the speed of light! <laughs> Jack. Oh! Ah! The Tartarus. Ah! 
let the fools have their Tartarus. So, we just watched <laughs> Tartarus. Ah! Wow, what an amazing film. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it ran away with all of my accolades. Yeah, right. I'm surprised I never heard of it. It should have won awards the year that it came out. You know what, you know what film did win tons of awards? The Last Vampire on Earth by Vitaly Versace. Have you seen this? I have seen this. You, were you there on this episode? I don't remember. I was not there on this episode, but we watched that beforehand. Uh, that's the movie about the AIDS vampire. Right, right. It's heartbreaking. If I am to remember that correctly. Correct. Right. Who is in love with a girl who is a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. And then they eat a lot of fried chicken. Yeah. And there's a little fat brother. Yes. <laughs> oh, so good. So beautiful. Well, we happen to have another film of Vitaly Versace's. It's called Born Into Mafia. Oh, 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 no. That's the actual cover. Yeah. This is not something that you made as a joke in Photoshop. No. And uh, people online said it's the best crime film. It's a, that quote is attributed to people online. People online. Not probably not People Magazine. No. But just just people. People online have said it's the best crime film. Commenter has once said this movie is so awesome. Can you refute it? No, no. I guess it has to be more than one person. So Several people. If you could only find one person who said best crime movie or best crime film. Also, like the four stars that it is given is not in quotes, and so I think those are just random four stars that happen to be next to the pull quote. It could be four stars out of 50, for all we know. Oh, good, we got the widescreen edition. Oh, thank God. And it's proper aspect ratio. I was the only one on the plane. <laughs> I have no luggage. I'm walking away from baggage. Nice to meet you. So, how is the LA? It's awesome. Look at the weather. So, should we get your luggage? I don't have a luggage. A Russian with no luggage. What are the chances of that? Hold on. What? <laughs> was it slow down shot? Didn't you just anything. didn't have a reaction? Nope. I, I'm so sold already. Once in the Mafia, always in the Mafia. There's probably some truth to that statement. I'm sure Vitaly Versace knows all about... Oh, this is restricted. Are oh. We, is Rich okay to watch this? <laughs> uh, Rich, are you okay with a restricted film? It's not technically R-rated by the MPAA. It it's is just restricted. Just restricted. Does it say who is restricted? No. <laughs> no. 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 Then I don't know. Um, well, if you feel uncomfortable, let us know. Do you have any restrictions, I guess is the better question, right? Do you have any Versace I, restrictions? No, I, you know what? I think I'm going to risk it. Do you have mob ties that might put you in danger for making fun of this movie? No. This is what the back of the box says. This film is a concentrated study of a Russian m mafia family. Ivan runs to America to escape the organized crime curse and start a new life. Hi. Oh, hi, Ivan. Welcome to America. Thank you. I know you're going to enjoy staying in our home. Let's all have some tea. I'll get the tea. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure the couch still worked. <laughs> it still works. A concentrated study of a Russian mafia family. They can't make that font any bigger without pixelating it. They have nothing to say about this movie. Uh, uh, is three or Shooting Star Productions. The, the logo for Shooting Star Production is mostly cut off uh, the S. The mark of quality, shooting the production company, can't get their logo right on the back of the box. I think we are going to see stock footage of a helicopter. Okay. That's and they're going to say, so. hey, we got to go to New Jersey. 
Hey, now we're in New Jersey. That was a good helicopter ride. Hey, that's the exact thing we're going to do. Is Tony Danza in this? Or? Tony Danza? Yeah. The, what is the lady's name? Monica! Angela. Angela. Hey, Angela, we're going to New Jersey. Born in the mafia over here. Like a mama used to born. Fuck. Yeah, I think right now becomes English first language in the world. So most of the, I was in private school. My dad has a lot of, a lot of money and connections. So I was, which is I got tired of that, but I, I was in private school. You might say I was born and, uh, into mafia. I had the best uh, education, basically. It's just not about that. It's just uh, so as my mom died, I missed, I missed love. You when know? I was ten. Well, the, the last vampire is clearly the superior film. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Well, here we are, everybody. The discussionary phase of Best of the Worst. This was um, an exciting gimmick. No. It was, it was before we watched the movies. And conceptually, it was an interesting gimmick, but ultimately a failure <laughs> and a disaster. <laughs> uh, we should call this episode Second Bests, mm. or maybe Third Ooh. Bests, Fourth Bests. Although we should have known what we were getting into with the first one, since the last time we did the McNamara Brothers movie, we did destroy the tape. <laughs> I hated it that much. Really. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, well, just as a reminder, obviously, uh, this one, what is this called? Dragon Hunt. Dragon Hunt. Dragon the, the first film was called Twin Dragon Encounter. Mm -hmm. This one is Tartarus. It's, of course, made by Dave Waskovich, the creator of Suburban Sasquatch, and Born into Mafia, Vitaly Versace. Oops. The one and only. The one and only um, directorial auteur tour de force of filmmaking, uh, he made uh, The Last Vampire on Earth, which all three of those films were great. Mm -hmm. This is their inbred stepsons. Yes. <laughs> this is their less than. Let's talk about... Can't remember Dragon the name. Dragon Cunt. <laughs> I, I can never remember the name of this movie. Uh, I'm going to pass this off to Jay because Jay has extensive knowledge and a good memory of these kinds of, of movies where people shoot guns in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> it does get hard to keep track. I don't even know how many we've watched at this point, but this is this movie, uh, Dragon Hunt. It, it picks up right where Twin Dragon Encounter left off. Uh, the main bad guy, Jake, uh, who got a spear in his hand or something in the last movie. I guess that was enough where they had to amputate his hand, and now he's got a, a plastic hand that's spray painted silver. Oh, well, it's a metal hand. It's a metal hand, sure. Wait, we got a, a metal hand. But he's very, very upset mm. that he got ousted by the famous and talented and ripped and manly McNamara brothers. Yeah. Those. So Twin dragons. Those twin dragons, curses. We're robbing your ship. In case you're wondering, ladies and gentlemen, this is a stick up. Considering everything else that happened in the movie, the, i.e. the entire thing was in the woods, mm -hmm. that opening was exquisite. That's true, there was lots of shots, compared to the, the way the action scenes in the first movie were executed, where it's just one flat wide yeah. shot. We're getting lots of cuts in this there, movie. There is definite cinematic improvement in this. Wait, they learned lessons from they, the first film. The first thing that happens is they rob the boat. No, the first thing that happens is they buy guns before they have stolen money to buy guns? Oh, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They but, buy guns from like the mafia who insist on knowing why they're buying the guns. That's right. Right. Who are you gonna use the weapons against? I told you it was none of your business. It is my business. That's the only way I sell guns. We have a policy here. Make something up. That's all you gotta do. Two karate dojo owners. <laughs> what? 
who may or may not want to fuck each other. That was one of those, like, reinforcing the idea that the twin dragons were the most badass, because mm. the mafia says, who are you going to shoot with these guns? They say, we're going after the twin dragons. And they say, oh, good luck with that. Ha, 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 ha. Another important thing to note is that they totally have girlfriends, mm -hmm. like, all the time. Oh, yeah. With boobs and sex. <laughs> not... Not the same girlfriends for the first movie, no, we're not sure. different uh, girlfriends. But before we get there, I wanted to mention one of the exciting scenes in the opening is I guess the, the, the bad guys, they, uh, they rob this boat and they leave behind a clue to frame the McNamara brothers, which is half of a necklace that the McNamara brothers also have. So the cops arrest them just based on the fact that there was a necklace on the boat. And then the, the greatest scene happens where they just beat the shit out of them. You were there, you and your brother. What about this medallion we found? So in the hey, what about it? So, so despite the fact that there are nine guys with machine guns, because they found a medallion, that's their medallion, they just assume that they... Yes, yeah. that was the evil master plan, <laughs> is every cop knows these medallions. I think it's the best scene in the movie because it's just so satisfying to see those guys get their asses kicked. But the bigger question is why does this happen? Because then they let him go and it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Right. It would have made for a much better movie. Like they're trying to clear their names. Yeah, that's what I thought it was going to be. But then it's just, no, we got to get him back in the woods so they can run around and throw spears just like the first movie. Be because it's all about their ego. Because so they get saved by another cop who says, no, these are the twin dragons. They're the coolest. <laughs> What'd you let them go for? Because 10 years ago, these guys saved my ass. They're friends of mine. I don't care if they're friends of yours. I've got proof that I can put them there. Screw your proof. You're a necklace, you that's the proof? Vendetta against them, and you're not thinking like a cop anymore. Your personal feelings are getting in the way. You're the one who's rescuing them because of your personal feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Did they sink the boat and kill everyone on board? Why are these cops so angry? <laughs> That's the end of that. You can go free. So they instantly go on another vacation. <laughs> yeah, to the exact same cabin in the exact same island mm -hmm. where Jake and all of his henchmen are. Well, the most exciting thing that happens in the movie is that the, the bad guys use the money that they robbed from the boat to, uh, to buy this evil compound from an actual realtor. We have a scene where they negotiate the price with the realtor, which means they had to do paperwork, they had to have a closing. How long did all this take? There was probably an inspection that needed to be done, yeah. closing costs. It, it was, I'm sure, like a week's worth of work for those bad guys. I'm the worst realtor ever. How much? Four million. Three? Two million. And we can offer you an excellent second mortgage plan. Jake! 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 Is this supposed to be funny? Down the hill back there, there's a great place to build a training camp. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the important part of, of the movie is, uh, once again, they go on vacation. Their girlfriends, who uh, do, the, uh, do a double cross, drug them, and they are now in a cage in the middle of the bad guy camp. Mm -hmm after they swam to visit the bad guy camp the day before just to check on the bad guys. This yeah. movie is a lot less homoerotic than the first yeah, one. Yeah, that's what made the first one so much fun. Yeah, them on that ATV and... They just, they were just oiling each other up and rolling around yeah. and climbing on... Yeah, there's not as much of that in this movie, unfortunately. The pogo stick scene was incredibly awkward in the first one. You think of what I'm thinking? Yeah. Well, for one, the first film is identical to this one. With mild differences. Sure. They have two ladies who may or may not be the same ladies. I'm going to put them I'm going to put some side by sides up here. Uh, I think they're the same ones. They might be. They're Canadian. They and I don't mean the same actresses. They very well could be the same actresses. Whether or not they're supposed to be the same characters, I don't know, because they never say their names. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even get introduced. They just We just cut to a wide shot on, of them on their like boat going to their cabin. Yeah, it's just, like, oh, I guess that's their girlfriend. They just assume that ladies are always with them. Mm -hmm. And they always have a lady each, 
to go to their vacation cabin. They once again go to this site of a horrible violent incident that occurred a month ago. Right. Maybe last summer. I don't know. It was last summer because the end credits to the first movie. Oh, that's right. Say that Jake will come to bother them again oh, next summer. summer. Okay. <laughs> so it's a, it's a yearly thing. It's an annual thing. But they show up at their cabin and they have their their twin dragon uh, martial arts academy poster on the front door, mm -hmm. and there's a bloody arrow stuck in it. And then they're just like, eh. Uh, That's when you pull a Lawrence Fishburne in Event Horizon and just say, we're leaving. We're leaving. <laughs> we're leaving. Yeah, they say, well, some guys, uh, oh gosh, it's probably that, that armed militia again. I think someone's expecting us. Start on pack, we'll be back. We've got to get, we've got to strip down and go swimming. Let's, <laughs> Let's you, have our vacation. You girls stay here alone while we run off together. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to go swim and find out if they're on their island, which would be a different island since they bought new property. Right. So I don't know how they knew where to swim to, but they did. And when they're gone, that's when the girlfriends poison them. Because right. they're working for the militia. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, they're gonna drug them. I guess these girls are up to no good. Why they're... do you even need that whole army if you have girls that have infiltrated? Just wait till they're sleeping and have the girls stab them in the face. Maybe they're working on their own now. Poison they broke them. Away. Or just poison just them. Just poison them. You can't take out the McNamara brothers that easily, Jay. <laughs> you need an army. <laughs> The theory is that the guys knew the whole time and they were playing along. No, I think what happened was the girls were working for the bad guys and over the course of being in, in uh, the camp with the bad guys, they were like, oh, these guys are too bad. Now I feel bad for the McNamara brothers, so we're gonna help them. Right. But because they were, the uh, Jake and his crew were really mean to the girls, you know? But but the McNamara brothers don't seem to give a shit that the girls betrayed them yeah. at the end of the movie. Oh, and the, well, there's reveals with the girls too. They're cops. One of them's a cop. At least one of them is a cop, and that's the twist. And I don't. It, it doesn't lead to anything. The other one is like a horrible drug fiend. That also doesn't lead to anything. It doesn't lead. There's just one scene where she's like, "I need my drugs," and she's like chugging alcohol right. and she's snorting coke, I guess. But she and then it's it. never brought up again. Yeah. Jake has an army at a secret camp and the McNamara's are there in a cage. What is Jake's plan for revenge? What are his rules? And what are the parameters? What's this contest about? I thought we'd play a little game. Well, uh, so they, they uh, his first thing he's gonna do is let the McNamara brothers out of the cage and give them two hours. Get dressed. Got two hours. I'm sick of looking at your big dicks. <laughs> oh, they're so big. In that time, they could just jump in the water and swim away. They don't do that. Wrong. Why can't they do that? Because anyone who leaves the island will be shot. The People's Private Army will monitor the perimeter of the island. Once the hunt starts, anyone trying to leave the island will be shot. And then see, many scenes later, everybody leaves the island and walks around and goes <laughs> in boats. And... Well, they start using guns, too. That's completely yeah. thrown out the window after the contestants are all uh, what, killed. What do the McNamara brothers have to do? Um, well, they have to survive, I guess. No, no, they, they oh, are Oh no, given... there's a Capture the Flag! There's a there Capture the this Flag! Is, this movie is Capture the Flag! This is a, yes! The rules are quite simple. The twins will be totally unarmed. Only you men will know exactly where the rotating flag will be. <laughs> is he talking like that? The twins will try to capture the flag. Your job is to kill them. There's a $200,000 cash reward for the man who does the job. Oh, they're literally playing capture the flag. 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. What happens if they get the, the flag? The most dangerous game apparently is capture the flag. <laughs> they win. <laughs> what do they win? They get to go. I know what the bad guys win if they kill them. Whoever kills them gets $200,000? $200,000. See, 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 Jake. He got all this money together so he could hire people to hunt down the McNamara brothers. Mm -hmm. But he also has $200,000 prize for killing the McNamara brothers. Yes. But if you don't kill the McNamara brothers, you get shot. Or burned alive. Or burned alive. This is a great, great plan. It oh, makes yeah. perfect sense. Who wouldn't sign up for this? There's also a very specific and rigid schedule on yes. who gets to hunt the McNamara brothers and when they get to hunt them. The twins will be hunted 24 hours a day. You hunters will be divided into three groups. 
Each group takes an eight-hour shift. Beastmaster, you take the first shift. Red Skull, you and your ninjas will be the second hunting party. And Fat Man, you take the third shift. Hunters, take notice. Although the twins are vastly outnumbered, they are masters of kung fu and kickboxing. Complete professionals. They're also skilled woodsmen. The twins can survive in the bush in the harshest of conditions. Don't underestimate them. <laughs> they are so when awesome. When does the hunt start? Sunrise tomorrow. Can I wait a whole day? <laughs> there's, there's group A, who is the beast master, who has to hunt down the McNamara brothers with a happy, fluffy dog. <laughs> There is Group B, the ninjas, who are not allowed to hunt the McNamara brothers at night. There are Group B, the next scheduled after the Beastmaster. And then Group C is Bubba, who he's has a crossbow, and he's fat. Yeah, that's it. But even though he's Group C and the ninjas are Group B... Wait, no, because the ninjas are originally Group C. No, I'm, I'm sorry, no, no, I got no, the schedule right. wrong. You're... The ninjas are originally scheduled to go last after Bubba, but for some reason they send out the ninjas. So and... it went A, C, B1, B2, C. Can, can we clarify our fat men, though? <laughs> there's a, many fat men. Because there, there's, there's a country music star. With with the chains, the yeah. beastmaster. That's the beastmaster. That's the beastmaster who, who has, has the fluffy one dog. Beast, by the way. <laughs> there is a fat guy in overalls with crossbow who can't run, who they taunt him with heart attack. That's the fat man. That's the fat man. But then there's also the 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 heavy guy, the mentally oh. challenged the, one, the oh. dim-witted guy who's like seven feet tall and six hundred. Yeah. They say pounds. he's too dumb to feel pain or he's, something like he's that. He's like a brute, like. You could punch him in the head a hundred times and he'll just keep fighting. Yeah. And and so what group all three of these guys belong to, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, it goes without saying because it's the McNamara brothers. They, they just kill everybody, which means we get to see the McNamaras kill a fluffy, cute dog. Oh, Mr. Fluffy. Our heroes have now killed a friendly, fluffy dog. <laughs> um, and that's, yeah, so like immediately you're like, oh, I hope that the McNamara brothers don't win. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't like them anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then they not only murder, but taunt and murder someone who is severely overweight. They keep like wishing for him to have a heart attack. Like, <laughs> like, and yes, the fat man is hunting them, but after the fat man misses his shot, the McNamara brothers are like jogging after him going, run, fat man, run, like poking him with sharp sticks. I think they just stab him in the back. They do eventually. <laughs> they, 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 they play with their food. <laughs> after, after his, his foot gets caught in a bear trap or whatever, and then they just stab him in the back. That's very, very honorable. Him. These are like like the basic rules of the hero, right? The hero never like murders. Well, I mean, they, they kill people they, in defense. They will kill people, but yeah. only if they have to. Even in situations like this, if the fat guy they've eluded him and he's walking away, leave it be. Don't run up and stab yes. him in the back unless your life is in mortal danger. That's that's rule number one. Yeah. And then to put all this in context, which is the baffling part, is I get that these guys aren't big fans of the Canadian government, and their whole shtick is we're, we're like, I don't know, not mountain men. What would we're you call real them? men. We're, we're tough, tough men. men. We're manly men. Yes. They're the manliest men to manly. Na yeah. They're naturists. They, they, they often flaunt how, like, how much prowess they have with like building things and chopping wood. Sure. I mean, they surviving. get down to speedos. They're not quite naturists, but they get close. <laughs> but my point is, you're going, you're, you're going back to your cabin with your ladies, yeah. right? And there's a bloody uh, arrow in your door. And, and your old nemesis is there with an army on a neighboring island with machine guns and explosives. And there's never ever a thought that crosses their mind of, 
can they go in their cabin and find a phone and pick it up and dial the Canadian equivalent of 911, which is 916-834-765897, and call the Canadian government and say, we're in trouble. Well, and I think but the important point that you made there, Mike, was the McNamara's, after getting their two-hour head start, immediately are in the water outside of the radius of the island. They have already escaped. They have chosen then to come back and murder everyone. It's just a poorly executed story. They wanted to have an action movie with, yeah. with martial arts, fighting, explosions, gunfights, and they did not know how to properly frame it and tell it. Yeah, they don't understand story, no. structure, motivation. Motivation. They did though, uh, and when it comes to the execution of the action, it's like they watched our previous episode and they took notes, because yes. the things that we complained about, they greatly improved on in this movie. But the, the fight scene with the ninjas at night, we, oh, get yeah. some, we get some fire, which is motivation for there being light at night. and It's, it's not the worst. Not the worst. It's not the worst. That's the, the best compliment just, I can give it. It's just illogical. It's just a bad story. Like yeah. they, they, at one point, we laughed because they stole the two hundred thousand dollars in a briefcase. Mm -hmm. They steal the prize money, which I think at this point, everyone's either dead or has forgotten about the prize money, <laughs> and they're running around with the prize money. And at this point, guns are okay. See, that was, that was so potentially clever, them stealing the prize money. Like, I think a clever writer could have done something with that, where that was yeah. like a tool they used to throw a monkey wrench into the whole game, and now, and now the mercenaries they hired aren't getting their money, and then the mercenaries turn on Jake's men, and they're, yeah. they're fighting each other now, and the, the McNamara brothers are using that confusion to their advantage to rescue people we care about. Right. Something. But what ends up happening is they end up like on a sand hill and a helicopter shoots at them with a machine gun, but they shoot at the helicopter and they win. Fred, pull up! Pull up! Fred! Fred! Holy shit! Ah! Uh, oh! Not bad. Oh. They did their best. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. And then there is a cacophony of violence. <laughs> An absolute madhouse of fists. It's just a montage of close-ups of, of punches and kicks, basically. But the payoff, though, to the stealing the money plot is they just drop the money. Get the money! Nope, that's the end of that. Oh, there goes the money plot. <laughs> Bye. Wow. Yeah. That's the payoff to that. Yeah. They steal the money, yeah. and then like a scene later, oh, they, they, they drop the suitcase. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They just ran out into the middle of an open area when they know they're surrounded by men with machine guns, which is yeah. the dumbest thing you can do if you're surrounded by men with machine guns. I think they did that just because, well, one, you can, it was a nice open area where they can set off explosions. Yeah. Whee! Whee! seemed like they, I mean, they really must have liked the look of those explosions in the sand. Oh, and it well, just got really self-indulgent. I mean, it looked cool, but you do it two, three times and you got it. But it went on for like 10 minutes. So if they could just stand back and if their third film would have had like a script writer come in, someone with knowledge of, of film pacing and plotting and, and said, no, wait guys, let's do this. And they could have discussed it and said, well, but we're so awesome. But you need a moment where you know, you guys are you're kicked and you're down and you have to fight your way back and you have to be clever and you have to do something heroic and, you know, you have to, the, all the beats that a movie needs to satisfy an audience, all completely lacking in this. Well, I think another problem is that even if it had all that stuff, the McNamara's themselves are horribly uncharismatic. Yeah. But Jay, they have awesome mustaches. That's true. That's I don't true. think you could make them likable. No. no. I think that's a, that's a difficult task. But if you're gonna make a movie with them anyway, at least you could take a stab at it. You could, they, could, they could do some cute things with their girlfriends and you know, maybe they have a funny, a funny uh, date scene. They go out to a nice restaurant and then uh, one, the girls go up to the powder room, right? And then the, you know, they come back and they accidentally sit at the wrong table oh, and, you have, and, the, and, and you have some kind of funny stuff and, and which makes like them. That's and, another thing that they never play up is the fact that they're twins, really. 
One's a world famous maestro. The other, a martial arts master. There's stuff you could do with that. Remember the Barbarian Twins? Oh, yeah. they, they were in a series of movies in the late 80s into the early 90s. Yeah, yeah. There's so many jokes about the fact that they're twins. You could do something with that. This unlikely pair will have to switch gears, swap places, and kick twice the butt. But, but they, they would never want to make fun of themselves. That's true, yeah. They would They're never be awesome. comfortable making it. You know what would be an amazing, stuff. amazing sequel bait at the end? Is these two are like, they're shot up, they're on the ground. You think Jake has won the day. Yeah. And then we hear <laughs> helicopter blades, two ropes drop, two more McNamara's drop. <laughs> Quadruples. There's four of them. Quadrants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Quad dragons. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Marco and Mitchell McNamara, the long lost other twins. We thought you died in Nam. No, my, my death was faked. I was in the super secret service. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's really nice to see you. I was doing black help? ops. You want to help us fight this guy? They just, uh, they just liberated the POW Canadian camp. <laughs> we were set free a while ago, but we wanted to help clean up. Because <laughs> Canadians are very nice. Oh yeah, they cleaned up their cells, they washed their, their cell. We felt bad for leaving. They seemed to have a good time kidnapping us. <laughs> Viet Cong let us go, but you know. We just, we just didn't want to say anything, didn't want to make him feel bad. We wanted to tidy up a bit. But we're back, we're back. And we brought some bazookas with us. Yeah. And uh, we're ready to kick some ass. Oh. oh yeah, kick some behind. And then they leave with the girls, who I guess they're friends with now. Sure. And that's Dragon Hunt. But wait. And that's it. And they so, went home with the McNamara. So they're just okay with them betraying them? They never. Wait, wait. This film was in no way assisted by Telefilm Canada or the Ontario Film Department. Man, they got a grudge against a lot of different people. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, everyone, justice was served to Jake and his nasty army, and cosmic justice is served in Tartarus. Uh, I'm gonna hand this one off to Jack. Oh! Not you, no, because I know you hate this drivel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Jack did say it was an A-plus idea executed in a D-minus way. Okay, so I did say A plus for idea, and I unironically mean that. I am into arty farty shit, and this is some arty farty shit, and I love it when filmmakers attempt to get across a big dumb idea in a meaningful way. I'm not, I'm not saying that David Waskovich has reached Breen levels of art in cinema, but he's reaching towards Breen with Tartarus. Mm -hmm. Complete with rooms covered in garbage bags and everything. I like what he's trying for here. I like the garbage bags. I <laughs> it's off to an average start. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I think the moral of the story is after you make your set, uh, look in your camera mm. that too. and see what it looks like. Well, it's hard to do that when you're also in front of the camera wearing an awkward alien mask. Oh. You can't really <laughs> monitor your shot. So Tartarus yeah. is the story of John. And John is, um, John is abducted and tortured by aliens who actually aren't aliens. They are kind of celestial beings who are trying to help John make good moral decisions. It sounds like, it sounds like I'm giving away the plot, but we find out all this information within five minutes of starting the movie. No, well, at first we think he is actually abducted by aliens. That's kind sure. of the, the reveal halfway through is that, oh, it's not really an alien. Sure. It's just a guy in a cheap dollar store alien costume. Tortured repeatedly in like 
obscene and, and vulgar ways. <laughs> That's draining his balls of blood. <laughs> I don't like this. And you know, you think it's like this, the classic alien, you know, anal probe type stuff, but it's just the body horror version of that. And that's what you think the movie is for a while, except it's kind of completely obvious what the twist is gonna be, mm -hmm. which Jack thinks is an A plus idea. And it's, it's the laziest, it's like what a stupid person would do when he's trying to be pretentious. <laughs> he was dead and in hell the whole time. Ooh. No! 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 And like the alien's just punching him. <laughs> what is this? No! But that, that wasn't the only twist. I, I'm with Jack a little bit on this. Okay. That wasn't the only twist. It's like, oh, he was dead the whole time, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was, it was, it was a roller coaster ride. Of, <laughs> well, um, we should establish the framework of it. The frame, okay. Is, the is he's, he's on the alien ship, he starts to get tortured, and we get a little flashback. Uh, to, it's, it's very, told very in a fractured way, but a flashback to him doing something horrible. <laughs> Who doesn't want a slimy vacuum up their butt? <laughs> <laughs> so his, his, his terms were, but it really goes in. <laughs> oh, crack! Oh, he's smoking crack? He's smoking crack! Oh my god, he's he got does a... it all! Oh, because of butt crack. It all makes oh, sense. Yeah. And as it goes along, then we go back to the alien him being tortured, and then another scene of him on Earth mm -hmm. doing something horrible. He's basically the worst person ever, and he's done all the horrible things. That is the construction of the film, the yeah. back and forth, the different scenes, but the overall, John is a terrible person who's dead, and he's in a place called Tartarus, which is so, not uh, uh, sort of limbo, not quite heaven or hell. Yeah. It's the afterlife, and Dave Waskovich himself is in an alien mask as as a eternal is wonko the eternal preparer who are you i am the preparer prepare for what for what comes next i'm the preparer for the transition from life to death what are you talking about this is a house of preparation preparation for what and he's preparing john to either go to heaven or hell yeah based on his decision. Preparing him to be judged, okay. but they're giving him, he's giving, he, what he's doing is he's giving John the best possible chance of making it to heaven. Yes. It's like here, you've, you've been a fuck up your whole life. Here are our examples. Here's, here are your examples. We're gonna torture the shit out of you and maybe you'll fucking learn your lesson before we make our final judgment on you. Right, and John is thick as a brick. <laughs> Uh, in, in the brain area. Yes. Look, I don't mean any disrespect, but I have no idea what you're talking about. I suppose some things do need to be spoon-fed to you. You do know where you are, don't you? Tartarus. Ah! Good. So you've gotten something after all these years. And just a reminder, this, this heady, esoteric concept is from the director of Suburban Sasquatch. Yes. <laughs> That's the important part. Oh. He wanted to make a leap into something arty, and he tried. He tried. And and you know what? The the special effects are god awful. The set <laughs> yes. is god awful. Yes. The acting is is pretty bad. The garbage yes. can is awful. The, <laughs> the garbage the, the the weird snake monster that attaches itself to his penis. <laughs> and sucks blood from his balls. Yes. The best performance in the movie is from the anal probe. Yes, there is an anal probe. <laughs> yeah, yes. John never, he never realizes what exactly is going on and he never takes the opportunity to change to become a better person because the fun part here is let's list John's atrocities. <laughs> oh, yay! P possibly in 
sequential order. Okay, let's go. Let's go round robin and see okay, who round can robin. who can't think of one first. So we'll um, start with Rich. B- bis- shady business dealings. That's like the first one. It's kind of mild. Explain it. I don't remember the details. He's just on the phone and he's doing Pass business. Pass it to me. Business, go go for it. Shady business dealing one. He is on the phone with a guy who runs an orphanage. Oh right. Yes. And he says, I need. $40,000 to invest in a sketchy penny stock and or a Ponzi scheme. Come on, trust me, yeah, the yeah. money will come through. Okay, I'm wiring it now, and he calls his broker or his banker. You've been approved for a $40,000 transfer from the Better Times Orphanage. Great, thanks, man. Sounds like you made a good deal here today. Yeah, John, you're a real smart Oh, person. wow. <laughs> An orphanage shouldn't be investing in penny stocks with, <laughs> with their orphan money. <laughs> That's that guy's fault. <laughs> Too smooth. God, I should be president. Can you get off my property? <laughs> <laughs> well, the next one after that is, I guess it's just he's a shitty husband. There's yeah. not much more to it than that. It's just a scene of him arguing with his, his homely wife. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then that's kind of it. You cut out my heart, you bastard! Goodbye, John! Um, You're going to get the good one, aren't you? No, because I believe the next one is doesn't going to Doesn't have to the... be in order. Oh, does oh I thought we were going in order. We don't have to. Well, I would have given a much better one. No, no, no and that. I won't give that one either. We'll save that one for Rich, because that <laughs> one's fun. Um, the next one is is the ball blood sucking, which is he just goes to a prostitute and, oh, and yeah. is a little rough with the prostitute. Obviously, like, prostitution is its own thing, but then he's extra rough. It's worth pointing out that that scene takes place in his driveway, which is probably Dave Waskovich's driveway. Yeah. And I'm just picturing all the neighbors like looking out their windows. What are you doing? Dave is at it again. Hey, no, stop. Oh, no. No, stop. No butt stuff. <laughs> is he farting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> We've got some connectivity here. What are you up to now, Waskovich? Right. You waskily Waskovich. You waskily Waskovich. <laughs> it starts off in like an alleyway or something, and then once she gets into the car, then it cuts now to a safer spot and it's yeah. very where the clearly. police won't come. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, and the next thing he does is he sells widows uh, scam UFO oh afterlife God. videos to save your soul. Ooh. Which is very ironic considering the situation he's in. Mm-hmm. Trust me. I have seen these alien ships. I know what these aliens look like. You see inside the ships? Oh no. Only those captured and tortured see in them. But my video will show you what the ships look like. How to avoid them. You will learn about the evil things they do to you. The horrors that He's just can. every scumbag. <laughs> uh, he's a whole lot of scumbag, yeah. To your dear Dave. He's a very busy man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> What can you do? Just buy this video. It will tell you all you need to know. I'm not sure. Look, it's only $50. It will tell you what prayers you need to do to help keep your husband safe. So now he's scamming widows. I don't understand. You see, these aliens, these UFOs, they take people away, torture them. They keep their souls. The only way we can prevent that is if we pray and pray hard. Pray that the camera gets yeah. back in focus. That's where the alien Richard, comes. I think Rich is forgetting the best I one. I am forget. I am. I, I really like the the I DVD Mike, one. Wait, that was my favorite. Yeah. One too. I don't know how that's possible. The DVD one was amazing I because I think we're gonna win this one. Uh, what what a bizarre scam. <laughs> uh, some old poor old lady said my husband died. Well, you know he's not going to heaven with Jesus. If you want him to go to heaven, you gotta pay me fifty dollars to watch this UFO video. Aliens will scoop him up unless you watch this video, which tells you all the exact prayers to say, so that your husband, on his way to meet Jesus, won't get snatched up by aliens. (laughs) And it's like, I think one out of maybe a billion people might fall for that. It's not the best scam in the world. So here's my question: Is his is his TARDIS that he's in? Is that his own personal Tartus yes. that, that the Eternal picked based on that? Yeah. Or was he just coincidentally right about what happens after you die? 
It is not his own personal TARDIS because we see the hundreds of bodies. Mm -hmm. So he was coincidentally right yeah. about the afterlife being a UFO that scoops up and tortures your soul. It's an ironic no, twist. It's, uh, he was not coincidentally right. That was also a construct to try to get him to change his, yeah. his ways. I think the other people that they show laying on the beds probably didn't also see okay. the alien. Okay. They saw the, the, the Dave Waskovich character in a different form. Oh, okay. Perhaps appearing as something oh, else. Oh, so he appeared life. as an alien because of this connection to his alien scam. Now that makes sense. That's why this he is got a very smart film. That's why the tree stump. A plus effort. <laughs> a plus <laughs> effort. That's why the tree stump tried to suck his balls off. <laughs> <laughs> to get back at him for for raping the prostitute. Okay, okay. Google Mike, has. Mike, Mike's, you're next, Mike's Mike. next. Mike's next. You're next for atrocities. What's the fun one I'm forgetting then? Oh my god! I can't believe we're gonna win. Oh god. Okay. I think I know what your guys are gonna say, so I won't steal it. I'm gonna go with crack pipe. Oh yeah, crack pipe. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I know they're gonna. Oh my God, how could I forget that? It's for it's for that. How oh could I forget no. that? So I'm gonna let them have it. How could it. I forget that? They were so excited. So, um, I mean, I don't care who says it. I just can't believe Rich forgot it. Right. I, there's so much that, was a clean that happened lamb. tonight. That's true, it is a very dense film. Uh, so our friend John, in addition to being a, a, a uh, selling penny stocks uh, that he knows will fail yeah. to orphanages, mm -hmm. uh, selling old ladies DVDs to pray to aliens so that they don't scoop up the soul of her dead husband. He also enjoys a little crack rock. <laughs> uh, who doesn't? And so he needs a refill on his crack pipe. Yeah. And so he stops in at Dave Waskovich's house, which might be why the Eternal looks like Dave Waskovich. That makes sense, sure. So he goes into this like really nice suburban house which apparently is a drug dealer's house. It has the same couch this that we see multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. This is the famous couch as cameo from the couch from the suburban Sasquatch behind the scenes footage. There's where... a scene in suburban Sasquatch in this house. Is there? Yeah, it's Grandma's house. Remember is that Grandma's he, house? Okay. He fights the, the oh, monster the in the living house? room. Okay. Yeah. I just recognize that couch yeah, from the behind the, the scenes. I think it's his house. That's where the, the Sasquatch knocks the door into pieces. Yes. yes. But it's still there. It's oh, just open. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, so what a great film. He, si he sits down at... <laughs> It is a great film. <laughs> Let's have a drink, drug addict. You need crack. And he's like, I've got the best. He takes out a plastic baggie. I've Bavarian? got the- Bavarian? Uh, not Bavarian. Is, what does he Bolivian? say? Bolivian. Bolivian? That, that's Bolivian. in Germany. Um, he says- <laughs> Would it surprise you? He wants, he, he has a crack pipe, right? Yeah. Which you smoke crack rock yes. out of it. Not cocaine, which you snort. So he says, I've got the best bag of Bolivian rock. It comes from the south. Pure Bolivian rock, straight from the south. So then John immediately starts snorting it up his nose. <laughs> Don't snort crack. <laughs> I don't think they knew what drugs were. No, no. David Waskovich has never drugged. Which, Probably you know, not. is good for Dave Waskovich. Yes. Good for him. I'm, yeah. This is not a slight against him, but maybe do a little research. <laughs> Though I'd love to see his movies if he actually did use drugs. <laughs> you know, like a little Google search. What do you call drug? Yeah. Dave Waskovich pulls a gun out and is like, I am a cop. Then he demands to know who his supplier is. Yeah. And then he's the buyer, so he's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And he starts panicking. And, you're my supplier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so again, they didn't know how drugs worked. And then uh, he gets shot in the head and dies. Hold it. This is a bus. What the? You have a right to remain silent. No, no, no. Don't do anything rash, all right? This is bullshit, bullshit, man. What the fuck is going on? Uh, it's pretty clear. Help you? What the fuck you want my help for? We're not looking for you, okay? We want your supplier. No, you wait. You're the one giving him drugs. <laughs> Jay. Oh, Jay. Well, yeah, you get, yeah. he loves to uh, drive around while chugging censored bottles of wild turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this one time he's doing that, he hits a poor innocent person in a wheelchair with his car and crushes their head like a melon. It's 
noon the best time for this? Is it going to be a kid? Oh, it's going to be somebody in a wheelchair! <laughs> oh, no! What what person in a wheelchair crosses in the middle of the street with no crosswalk? In the mean streets well, of the also, They were yeah. also blind, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, he was drunk driving. He, he runs over an innocent pile of clothes, basically. <laughs> <laughs> we watched 90 minutes of a guy just being an asshole. That's kind of the movie. <laughs> Jay, weird masks. Yeah, I guess if you don't have a DSLR camera and you can't get shallow depth of field, just make really shitty masks around things and blur out the background. There's a lot of that in this, and it was really confusing. Well, and uh, was he trying to imitate an arty depth of field look, or was he trying to cover up the garbage bags? It could have been either. <laughs> the fact that we don't know? Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the weirdest discussion we've ever had about a uh, Paul Thomas Anderson film. <laughs> Who would have thought Dave Waskovich would make a weird decision when it comes to a visual effect? <laughs> Cut to I never would have expected the Sasquatch that. picking up the cop car. Oh. John! John, what is that? John! Steve, what's going on? You know, it's a balance. You want to find that balance of practical and visual effects. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's going for here, you know. I feel like I'm in a sarcasm sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and, and meat. He had a real garbage can that he painted. Yeah. He had yeah. a real thing that he stuck on some guy's dick. <laughs> yeah, that was a little Oh, awkward. God. We probably don't want to gloss over that, right? That's the most disturbing part of the movie. Yeah. I, I, I would, okay. I'm going to delve into the why I give this A plus for the idea. Go for it. I'm willing, to listen. I'm willing to hear you out. I'm not a complete asshole. <laughs> you're, you're my friend, Jack, and I want to hear why you think this terrible, terrible idea is actually secretly good. <laughs> so, if this were presented in a slightly different manner, as if we were just going through John's life. Uh, uh, for example, in the movie, uh, we see him uh, talking to his wife and he's he's being a dickhead husband and blowing her off this relationship doesn't mean anything to him and then all of the sudden blood starts showing up on him and it is a kind of disturbing visual uh, similarly when he is having rough sex with the prostitute blood starts pouring out of his crotch and then she has like a weird tongue thing. That was very Jacob Slattery too. Yes, yeah. yes. And so there is this like melding of reality and what is real and what do, what consequences do my actions have? That sort of thing. And if the reveal that he was on an alien spaceship was pushed back a little bit and we just kept seeing this disturbing imagery and it cut back to his normal life as if he was imagining it, what is real, what is, uh, almost uh, uh, the empty man, you know, the thing oh, yeah. seen, the empty man, which plays a lot with what is real. If they went that route, I think you could have had a really interesting and atmospheric horror film that dealt with, yes, a simple subject, but it could have been very fun. Instead, in the first five minutes, we get Dave Waskovich in an alien mask. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say, this, this is a personal thing for me. I, I can't stand movies that play around with what is real, and you never know what's real, and is this the dream? I, I hate that. It's just disorienting to watch. It's yeah. not- That's it's not, the point, though. It's not my jam, is what I'm <laughs> that's, saying. That's fine, it's that's fair. It's not my jam. What I, I think this could have used, just, just narratively to make this more of a story, his memories in a sequence should have told some kind of story. Like, how did he become an asshole? Yeah. What were the things that happened that made him become more and more depraved? Would have been nice? Something oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, you're here, and you're gonna shut the fuck up, okay? That's it! I won't be with mommy. Your mother's out there whoring around getting pumped full of drugs. Is that what you want to be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! oh wait, no, he's gonna it's, beat it's him the belt. belt. It's the belt. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. We're all talking about what could have been or what you could have done differently, which applies to all three of these films. <laughs> You, with just the, and it happens a lot on this show, with sure. just the basic level of common sense, like we were talking to the McNamara brothers, 
you could just add this, this, move this around, try to give them this obstacle, give them this, th even this. Well, maybe we not that. This is my Tartarus. I think Red Letter Media is yeah. a Tartarus, yeah. Yeah, like the same Tartarus. thing over and over again, right? Like he keeps going through the loop where he, he escapes the aliens, he gets caught, they torture him, he escapes, he gets caught, just repeats. So there's like every episode every of Best episode of the Worst. Every episode of Best of the Worst. Is, worst. Yeah. I, I, I keep getting, you know, caught, forced to watch bad movies, miserable night. R rinse and repeat, I learn nothing. Where do the anal probes come in? <laughs> That's after we finish shooting. Oh, yeah. Okay. You told me it was mandatory. I told you. A plus for idea. A plus. I am on board with this so Jack, much. Jack, you're full of shit. I am so on board with this. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you tell us all about Vitaly Versace's other film? Born into Mafia. One of his other films. Okay, yeah. One of his other films, yeah. So this is, uh, uh, you know, Vitaly Versace. Famously, we had uh, a Spotlight episode, you know, Last Vampire on Earth. Fantastic, all-time great. One of our favorites. And this is uh, presumably one of his early movies where um, Vitaly Versace actually stars in this one. I just have a dad who's too busy killing people, not hug his son or love his family. He's Ivan, the son of a mob boss. He wants to go to America and not be a part of the mob. So then he goes to America. <laughs> I hate how dumb he looks. Look at him, what an idiot. I just don't like looking at him with his stupid pants. Look. His audition for Frodo went real bad. Yeah. <laughs> he did not get the part. I make such good hobbits. <laughs> I look like Elijah Wood, but I am too tall! <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, my acting is shit. <laughs> Guess I had to make my own movie. Contemplation in a backyard. I'm taking I a made, dump on the ground. <laughs> I made a movie called The Habit. <laughs> About none who must return ring. <laughs> <laughs> what is he supposed to be contemplating right yeah, now? Yeah, what is happening? He goes to America. He has friends that he met on the internet. They let him stay at their at his house at their house. And then he at like his first day in the country, he meets a girl. They go on a date and they get engaged. And then he has sex with her and has a dream where all of his friends die. And then he wakes up and none of his friends are dead, but the people who are going to murder him, that were actually going to murder him in real life, murder each other. And then he has baby. Who murders who in the mob? His uncle killed his father so he could take over the family business. Now he wants Ivan dead too. The uncle of the dad, I mean the brother of the dad, so murders the dad. This. Oh no! <laughs> This is embarrassing. Be stupid, guys. I'm in charge here now. The to take over the mafia. The dad really got killed. Yes. The dad really got then killed. Then the brother really flew to LA. Well, first he flies to LA in the dream. Well, no, he really flew to LA. <laughs> no, he no, there no. is a dream. That's all dream. That's why we see him That's leave the airport That's why we see him leave twice. the airport yeah. a second time. Yeah. Oh, shit! Yes, this movie is that stupid. <laughs> Half of the movie doesn't happen. 75% of the movie is fake. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand what's going on. Any drama or conflict or murder is all a dream. Wait, since everyone seems to have understood this but me, can I ask some, some questions, please? Sure. Yeah. Go for it. Um, okay, remember worst actor in the world. Yeah. And, and uh, the man, are you talking about Vitaly? Well, no. 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 You're talking about the other worst actor in the world. Yes. The, a, a man who should get this thing trademarked. Man who definitely can't read. <laughs> the, the bald white guy. Yeah. Who, who may or may not have rosacea. He, he, looks, he, he gets very, very flush in the face. I think that's just him, like, blood rushing to his head because he's just acting so hard. California heat. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, Ivan's problem could become your problem real quick. Vitaly's father 
uh, before he gets murdered by his own brother, mm -hmm. sends this guy, I think his name was Tom, Tom. to the, the, the U.S., to Los Angeles, to watch over Vitaly, a.k.a. Right. Ivan. And he's like, your father sent me to find you. Here are keys to car. Hello, Ivan. My name is Tom. Your father called me and asked me to help you out for a few days. I'm sorry I couldn't get you a car at such short notice. Here's the keys to my car. You can use it for a few days. There's more than enough money in the trunk to cover all your expenses. I give you money and take care of you, watch over you. And then we don't see him again for 40 minutes. Then we see him when he finds Vitaly's internet friends playing basketball and says, look out, Vitaly's in trouble. But that's in the dream. That's in the dream. That turns out to be in the dream. That turns out to be in the dream. Hey, it's that guy from the airport. Guys, where's Ivan at? He's out on a date or something. Oh shit! What's going on? <laughs> his uncle killed his father so he could take over the family business. Now he wants Ivan dead too. Oh no! <laughs> he never mentioned it to you? His father's the head of the Russian mob. <laughs> what? The... Look, we ain't got time for this. We need to find Ivan. We need to find him now. He's in trouble. What kind of trouble? I'd... That's on? the worst acting we've ever seen. <laughs> ever, bar none, in the show. This scene is beautiful. I made a promise to his father a while back. I'd watch out for him. That's what I'm going to do. Well, I don't see how that involves me, so... Yeah, Go find it Ivan yourself. Yeah. yeah, Ivan's problem could become your problem real quick. Oh no! Someone got shot. Get out of here, I'll keep him busy. <laughs> should, we, should we start at the beginning now? Because we got the overview. Yes. Because we're forgetting some important things. We're forgetting the, uh, the very nice uh, restaurant that the movie opens in. Yeah. The, that the is the totally, gritty. is absolutely a nice gritty nightclub. It's a gritty Russian bar because we start in Russia. Well, it's not, it's, it, uh, let's, Try to be accurate to the movie. It is not a gritty Russian bar. It is the fanciest restaurant in Moscow because the singer who is definitely singing says, I can't believe I'm singing in the fanciest restaurant in Moscow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought in all my wildest dreams that I would be singing in one of the most expensive restaurants. It's my pleasure. Which is actually a banquet hall that Someone's gonna get married there later that day. Vitaly showed up an hour before the, the wedding party, was supposed to get there for the reception, mm -hmm. and they shot these scenes. You know it's a really fancy restaurant because they can afford those fancy microphone cables that are completely clear. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's, it's such a simple thing. It's such a dumb thing, like, you know, just the microphone that is very clearly unplugged. Mm -hmm. But it is one of the first things you see when the movie starts. Yeah. I'm, gonna, can I, I'm gonna give the movie the benefit of the doubt here. Is this an us problem because we've worked with actual microphones? Is Joe Schlub watching this movie? Not that the movie is any good anyway, yeah. but are they gonna notice that detail or is that just something that stands out like bright, bold red letters to us? I mean, it is dead center in the frame. It's almost like the camera's focusing on that more than the singer. So it is kind of a problem. I'm gonna say 60-40. <laughs> we'll make it nice and easy. I think a common person, their bigger problem with the scene might be they're watching it and they say, why are there no people in this bar? That's the thing that would stand out on the subconscious level. Why is it uh, dressed for a wedding reception? Oh, oh. It's the quintessential example of this played better in the director's mind. Mm -hmm. and, the, and a general audience might not get that. They'll watch it and go, this looks cheap, yeah. but in our minds, we know he, interior, night, dingy nightclub, a, a haze of cigarette smoke. Yeah. Sultry, sultry singer, all eyes in the crowd are on her. Right. <laughs> I mean, I guess technically that's true because there's only one set of eyes, so. <laughs> right, you, you picture that jazz nightclub in, in Moscow in the, some kind of dingy district. Yeah. And, but but when, when reality hits, like, Oh, I want to film in your restaurant. Well, not a night. That's a, you could film after 2.30 in the morning when we're closed. Yeah. 
Well, no one wants to show up then. Well, you could come in Sunday at noon, <laughs> and we'll be here then. But a wedding party's coming in at two. And <laughs> <laughs> and don't bring too many people because all the seats are covered in those seat things. In the, the white wedding covering that you cover your yeah. cheap ass seats in to make it look like a wedding class. And the yeah. band hasn't shown up. You can go on the stage. We have a microphone, but we don't have a cord. <laughs> and, and then there's even like, so they filmed all the ladies parts when she's singing. Yeah. Bunch of angles, you know, and then they got her out of there. And then they went and filmed their their shots, the father and the son talking or whoever was talking. I think it was Vitaly and the father, right? Yeah, it's Vitaly and the father. They're having the conversation they're going to have for the next 20 minutes. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> well, then they continue that conversation in the car, but we'll talk about well, that we'll next. Get there, but yeah. I wanted to point out at that point, we think, we suspect that the DJ for the oh, wedding had arrived because we see lights. red, green, blue kind of flashy <laughs> lights <laughs> that weren't there before. That weren't there before. So he's he's got there. He set his gear up. <laughs> hey, I gotta start testing my equipment. Wedding party's showing up in like 30 minutes. So then we go to the library, and we meet Sergio. Oh, what was his name? Sir. Uh... Sir James. I'm tired of this mafia. It's not for me. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> How are you gonna get out of this? Okay, I haven't seen this before, uh, <laughs> and I'm into it 100%. Are you crazy? Your father won't let you do this in the millionaires. If he's not gonna log me, I'm just gonna run. I wonder if you experience can Sedona, this. Arizona, <laughs> <laughs> from Russia. <laughs> He, he meets his friend Sergio to again talk about how he wants to go to America. When they're in the American library. When they're in the, well, you know, it's like a theme <laughs> library in <laughs> Moscow where they have all these American things like, you know. Visit Arizona. Visit Arizona. Signs in <laughs> yeah, signs and everything's in English. Yeah. It's like a gimmick. It's like a little fun thing. I won't do it. Yes, you are. Our opening scene is Ivan telling his father how much he wants to go to his uh, to America. I don't want to be in the mob. I want to go to America. And his father, the information we get from the father is, uh, this is the family business. I only trust you to run it. Mm -hmm. Then we cut to the American themed library in which Ivan says, Mafia, it's not for me. I really want to go to America, but my father really wants me to run the business. I'm moving to the United States. And then the plot can really kick off and we get a, a, a really intense scene of Ivan and his father in the back of a car. I built up this whole business my whole life for you. What are they talking about? I didn't ask for. Because of your business, mom is dead, died. I don't have a mom. <laughs> so Guys, I hate it when people dead died. <laughs> Uh, well, Ivan takes the position that he would really like to go to America, but his father is really insistent, and, and I think true to his character, that Ivan is the only one he can trust to continue running his mafia business. But then, but then Ivan makes the point that he really, really wants to go to America. And he doesn't want to kill people. I asked you to take care of that situation for you, and you let me down. I'm not like you. I can just pull the trigger and kill somebody for... for he wants to become a doctor or a lawyer. A doctor or a lawyer or something that people used to, you know. And not kill people. It's very specifically well, not. Life. I can't just go and shoot somebody. It's it's just crazy. I'm, you know, and you know two not years Not kill ago, people. And then his father that. follows up with the old, you know, yeah, it's family business. I only trust you to run the business. Right. You were groomed to take over the family business. I don't have anybody else I can count on. I can't count on my brother. I think the important thing to recognize, though, is that Ivan then responds with, I don't want to kill people, and I would really like to go to America. You don't, you don't need somebody like me who can even shoot a guy. And Bible and God said, don't kill. I'm not going to kill anybody. And, and not be in a mob. Why you want me to kill somebody? This is crazy. That's, that's a fantastic counter, counter, counterpoint. Yeah, sure, yeah. But... His dad brings up an interesting point. An interesting point that, you know. Ivan, this is it. This is your life. This is what you were born into. This is what I groomed you for all these years. I can't, I can't deal with this, you know? He, he built up the business for his son and that he only trusts his son to run the family business. Right. You're the only one I can trust. That's why I don't want to jump in. 
because if I jump in, there is no way out. I want normal family. I want a normal life. I want to have wife, children, drive safe, not thinking somebody's gonna kill me. Got it, it. Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what you call a circular conversation. <laughs> This is what I grew <laughs> It's all like a tar Tartarus all over again. <laughs> I need you. Like, do you think that the driver is just up there, like, going, fuck Please tell me you're <laughs> <right."> <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. The driver just thinks they're doing multiple Russia. takes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're keeping this all in? <laughs> that was take one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of this. I don't want to do this. Wait, we're forgetting a scene. <gasps> what? Vitaly is sent to the mob shrink. Right? Oh my oh God, my I God. forgot about the That's famous right. shrink I forgot scene. about that. That's where we learn deep inner secrets about what's going on in Ivan's mind. Yeah. About, how he, about how he really wants to go to America. He doesn't want to kill people. But Rich, the shrink being the official mob shrink takes a medical position that the father who hired the shrink really only trusts Ivan to run the family business. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Stay. yeah. That was a shocking revelation. Oh, the Godfather poster. A Godfather poster at the shrink's office? <laughs> How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Ivan, I have worked May I with borrow a your copy of Heat? With your father. They are Training Day. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> You're a big fan of mafia movies? <laughs> And the shrink is also a fan of American crime movies. Yeah, like the shrink for the some Godfather. reason she has the like uh, her office looks like the apartment of like a twenty year old dude bro. Like a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. like a film dude guy. I think uh, it adds to her character that she has movie posters all over her office. Uh, crime movie. Crime posters. movie posters really, about the mob. She's a pro crime therapist. <laughs> it Did makes you notice sense. the training day poster was signed by somebody? Oh. I wonder who that was. I'm just picturing Vitaly going to some sort of signing. And yeah. Yeah, probably. I make movie too. I make crime movies. Hanging out uh, outside of LAX, just waiting for like. Uh, I see LAX Martin LAX. Scorsese. He signed my poster. <laughs> oh, Vitaly, Martin Scorsese didn't make Training Day. <laughs> Ivan, your father was telling me you believe in God and you're talking to God. You want to tell me a little bit about it? Whoa! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I believe in God. Drinking a full gallon of coffee. <laughs> now that needs to be a thing where every time they cut back to her, she has a bigger mug. <laughs> we have 30 minutes of a movie in which two pieces of information are given to us. Because they got us, the, the, he has to stretch it to 70 minutes worth of movie. And he probably, all said and done, has. Does he even have 20 minutes worth of material here? <laughs> No. 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 Man. No. Well, it also doesn't feel like this is a script. Like, it, it feels like it's improv. Like, it feels like he's just, some of the later scenes, too, even more so. It feels like Vitaly is just kind of, like, rambling. Oh, yeah. He's just saying things that he thinks that, uh, you know, sound like what the character is supposed to say. Yeah. And it just goes on and on. It's very ad libby. Like, the scene when his internet friend brings him to his home oh, where his yeah. mother lives. Oh, that fucking scene. And then yeah. his other friend is there and she makes them tea and they all just kind of chit chat. And he talks about how his father is a, is a successful, yeah. uh, important man. He, he never says mob. He, he kind of keeps no. it on he, the DL. He, yeah. but. but he does let them know that he didn't want to be part of the family business. Right. And wanted so to he came to America. America. So, how was your flight? That was pretty long, huh? Yeah, it was 14 hour long. Is it cold out there all the time? No, man, it's just not like in the movies. Snow. They think it's always snow, and it's the same thing like in the United States, you know? We had winter, we had four seasons, basically. Yeah. Right. What's the temperature? <laughs> well, right now it's cold, man. It's, uh, I think, 20 degrees below, but, well, see, that's, that's but because it's January, <laughs> man. <crazy. laughs> it's the same thing like in New York City. Basically, where I grew up, it's the same thing like in New York City. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> who, who killed Sergei? Was it the dad? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, his friend Sergei, he goes, uh, Vitaly goes to the gym. Yeah. And finds, Which is like the gym in an apartment complex. It's not like a gym yeah, gym. Yeah, it's like someone's garage yeah. with some equipment in it. But uh, his friend is hanging. Yeah. And there's a note that says, don't leave for America. You belong here or something this like that. This is your home. Suitcase. 
Yeah, who left that? Does dad do that? He doesn't seem to mind. I mean, it's never brought up again. Yeah. Anyway, so it doesn't matter. Nothing, because nothing matters. <laughs> Everything goes Ivan's way. Yeah. Including uh, meeting a woman, first woman he meets in America. He goes up to her in the mall, but we don't hear it because it was very noisy at the mall that day. Oh, and we don't even get to hear yeah. the first conversation because they were shooting in a mall. And you probably just heard uh, echoey mall noise. Right. The audio is probably terrible. So just don't include the audio. <laughs> That's how you make <laughs> a movie. slap some generic music over it and you're done. We just kind of have to imagine what, what? they're saying. <laughs> what else do we have to say about the love interest? He meets her at the mall, he talks to her, and then, well, I mean, their relationship progresses rather quickly. Well, they have, they have an amazingly romantic time where they walk down sidewalks and drive in the car uh -huh. and they just fall head over heels for each other right. to the point where he engages, he, he proposes to her the next day. I hope this is not going to be in shock for you, but would you marry me? What? <laughs> All right, I'm back in. I don't know what to say. I mean, I love you too, but... I hardly met you. It's... Well, I'll take that as a yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> she definitely did not say yes. She said, I just met you. I'm not sure about this. All right, that's yes. That's... That is a Russian yes. Yeah. Did he buy the ring like when she wasn't looking at the mall? Yeah, where did like, that come from? Where the fuck did the ring come from? I don't know. Also, in movie speak, it's a clear, obvious setup for something bad to happen to her. Yes. Uh, I was she gets kidnapped for, by the bad guy. Or she turns out to be the daughter of a rival Yes, yeah, she has a oh, Russian like, accent. Like, yeah. What yeah, she's also Russian. So, like, why don't they do something with she that? She might be French. I think they say something about Paris. No, she's from Russia. They say, oh. they say she's from Russia. Okay, then why don't you follow up with any of these, obviously? Jay, that would, that would make, like, for, like, a story, though. We if, like, there were, like, a twist where she's been hiding the fact that she was also born into mafia. That's what I was waiting for. Come they, have, like, they have a shared past they didn't she, even know about. She's she's the daughter of a different rival mafia king. Like it's like yeah. a Romeo and Juliet yeah, kind yeah. of situation. Yes, right? exactly. Like, That's the, what I'm saying. Well, how about this? She's kidnapped and he has to decide whether he's going to uh, lean on the mafia, his old way, the family he was born into, or if he was going to figure out a new strategy to rescue her that didn't have anything to do with being born into mafia. Are you talking about choices? I'm talking about a conflict informing character decisions. Oh my God, I spent the first 20 minutes of the movie talking about not wanting to kill people, but now I might have to kill people. Uh, oh, oh no! What? It's almost like it writes itself and Vitaly Versace couldn't figure this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what about if instead of things happening, nothing happens? <laughs> Everything worked out perfect for Vitaly. <laughs> no problem. What a great story for us to watch, Vitaly. Yeah. Well, that's the conflict in the movie. Not conflict, but the, the drama in the movie is then after, while he's off, you know, having his good times with his new girlfriend, uh, his dad's brother shows up in America kills his internet friends. He'd already killed the father. The, brothers, killed, the yeah. brother's trying to take over. Yeah. yeah. He killed the father, he's come to America, and he kills Vitaly's friends. Wait, I, 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 thought you, I thought you were gonna let me go! Oh no. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, his head was full of ketchup! <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. So, you know where to find his Jacob kid, right? Jacob. Oh, we should have asked him who Jacob is. <laughs> Someone look in the phone book for Jacob. Although his black well, friend is now someone else. <laughs> they couldn't get that actor back, so they just shoot him from the back of the head in the most shocking and lazy uh, piece of filmmaking we've that, maybe ever seen. They shoot him from the back of the head, then he gets shot in the back of the head. That, yes. Exactly. He had to get shot in the back of the head. Yeah. I'm not even the same character. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to run from me, 
I got you now, Jacob. <laughs> Original black guy was much darker skin. This yeah. Much lighter. I oh, yeah. love it. <laughs> but then it turns out that this entire last 30 minutes is just a dream because Vitaly wakes up yeah, and all of that was pointless. That could excuse so much bullshit too. What? Like it being a dream? It's a different guy. Oh, it's a dream. That's true, yeah. They, the... they interrogated the friend and never gave him an opportunity to answer yeah. any of the questions. They, it's a dream. They just keep yelling at him and he, like, he never gets to say anything. So Vitaly's two friends have been murdered. And then uh, 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 uncle has found the friend's house and murdered the mother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And well, after, right after he murders the mother, Vitaly just happens to come back to the apartment. And in probably one of my favorite scenes, uh, he, he notices the dead body. So he says, oh, I got to use the bathroom. And then he just runs away. Like, <laughs> he, 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 he jogs away from the scene of the crime. He fast walks away. He saunters like, like away. Like an elderly person at the mall. He's just like, eh. <laughs> he outsmarted me. Oh, no, you don't. No, no, you don't. Oh, he didn't even lock, lock the bathroom door. Ivan, what are you doing? Come back! Just want to talk to you. With my gun. <laughs> I mean, you could also jump over that thing. Yeah. Run, run faster, <laughs> Vitaly. <laughs> and and then we get a we get a lovely, another awkward scene in which our main actress does not want to be near Vitaly. Um, <laughs> She's, you know, wrapped in a towel and it's supposed to be this kind of like loving confession of like, I was so worried, I had a dream, all my friends died, I thought you died. And she's like, great, <laughs> I love you too, don't touch me. Well, this is, this is Vitaly's Oscar scene. This is when he finds out his father dies yeah. and he stumbles over his lines and it's just in the movie. Hello? What? <laughs> She's so annoyed. <laughs> With the towel. What happened? Somebody called me from Moscow, one of my uncles, and said that my dad uh, got shot two days ago. Right? What? <laughs> what do you say? He's like, so, someone just called me from Moscow. They say my dad died, uh, he got shot or something. Two what? days ago. Two days ago. <laughs> he died, he got when shot. When I got the news that my father died, I felt like my dream became alive. <laughs> What's happening? He's dead. Guy. I just thought, and he's so bored. He sounds bored. All of his dialogue, he sounds bored. Yeah. He's making the movie. This is supposed to be a passion project of his. He's like, I just found out my dad died. It was killed. I don't know. I think what he needs to make is a sequel to Born into Mafia, mm. because where nothing we, happens. We have we have Ivan, and he's you know he's he was born into Mafia, and we talked about his girlfriend, how she might also be born into Mafia. They had a kid together. We can make a sequel, Born In To Mafia, oh, yeah. about the child. They, they, they raised their son to be, you know, an American, and uh, he's 12, 13, 14 years old by now. And then he discovers through the internet their parents, his parents passed, that they both were into Mafia. Ah, okay, and okay. And he wants to be born into Mafia. Oh, he wants to be in the Mafia, okay. He, okay, he that's goes, a twist. He flies back to Moscow on his own. And he doesn't know anything yeah, about uh, Russian culture right. or the Mafia. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> he gets some fish out of water stuff. Yes. <laughs> and he, he eventually he becomes his own little mob boss. <laughs> and, and Vitaly and his wife have to stop him. <laughs> He like starts gathering up homeless people to try and make his own little gang. <laughs> You're part of the Versace clan. There's some like super old mobster. Because everyone's dead at that point, right? Yeah. No, really, it's, it's the story about how um, Vitaly Versace was born into wealth and is doing just fine. <laughs> Yeah. Like, that's the personal story he told. It's like, oh, yeah, my dad gave me a bunch of money. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's drug, it's blood money, but I did not make it. Who cares? I'm doing all right. Everything seemed to work out for Vitaly. And that's the thing with all three films is, is we're just... We're just salivating over <laughs> ways to fix them. <laughs> and they are what they are. And the, that, is, that is where we're at. And, picking the best
of the worst. And this is this is fucking difficult. Oh, I'm so excited for this part. Yeah, well, you go first then, Jack. Guys, it's Tartarus. <laughs> it's so Tartarus. <laughs> Tartarus is the best of the worst because you can tell that David Waskovich really put his heart into it. It had the most weird props. It had the thing that was the vacuum that sucked that guy's dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was blood coming out of his dick. He gets his hand chopped off at one point. We didn't mention that. <laughs> oh, you got it on his alien roll. Yay. And then the little stomp. Remember when they ran over the guy in the wheelchair? Yeah. That was hilarious. Okay, uh, Jay? Uh, I'm also gonna go with Tartarus. Yes! It's the most ambitious. And I mean, these two, they're barely trying. And Tartarus, it's like, there's absolutely no story. There's a concept, but it's just like, weird visuals after weird visuals, bad effects, mm -hmm. uh, 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 terrible story. Mm -hmm. No character growth. It's got it all <laughs> and nothing at the same time. It sounds like all three of these films. <laughs> what we're Rich? I'm going to agree with you. Even though it is not a fucking A plus idea, it is C minus idea at best. I, I would agree with that. It is the most entertaining thing we watched tonight. Mm -hmm. sure. Into ma Born into Mafia. I love the I love the behind the head actor change. I adore that, but it's anemic. It's an anemic experience, yeah. and the McNamara brothers are boring. So I'm giving it to Tartarus. Uh, see, I'm not. I don't want to be. I'm not doing the contrarian on purpose thing. But I I pick Born into Mafia. No, that's fine. You know what? I think all of these movies are okay. None of the I don't hate any of these. Yeah, sure. I. I think I had more fun watching this. And the rules are always what's, sure. there are no rules, it's whatever you personally right. choose. I, I get the, the, the badness of this, the attempt, the, all the weird things going on in it. And to me it wasn't as much fun to watch as it was to watch the, just the sheer inept failure of trying to make a movie. There's the I think charm I of the non-charisma of Vitaly and his performance. Yeah. That him, goes a long way. He sounds like Tommy Wiseau. He's stumbling through his lines. Yeah. There's the awkward camera. All, the, all those like those wonderful little like we're trying to make a movie but we have seven dollars and a camcorder and we're you know I, I just think that's hilarious sometimes especially when you deal with a big subject like the mob. <laughs> It just makes it hilarious, and it was it, it was fun funner to watch. It's close. It's close. Well, I guess we realize now, in hindsight, that Twin Dragon Encounter is better than Dragon Hunt, and we destroyed Twin Dragon Encounter. We're not going to destroy Dragon Hunt, so it feels uh, irresponsible to, to have destroyed <laughs> Twin Dragon Encounter. So. Something we wish we could take back. Something we wish we could take back. And you know, Colin in Canada, he has the two halves of the tape, so maybe he can help us with that. I don't know, maybe. Colin, we just watched Dragon Hunt. We need your help. I currently possess two halves of the only existing copy of Twin Dragon Encounter in the world. Somewhere in Toronto, I keep the halves preserved in a tank filled with human amniotic fluid, just waiting on the day to be called to reassemble the tape. And believe me, it's no easy process. I remove a few drops of the world's most expensive maple syrup, Canada's own buck drop syrup, squeezed from maple trees in the nether regions of Saskatoon, an area so remote few men dare to travel there, a mystical place filled with trees rumored to have magical properties. This small bottle costs 15,000 Canada dollars and is filled with syrup so thick, dark and exotic, Justin Trudeau himself used it as blackface makeup. It is also rumored that Keith Richards once poured an entire bottle up his nose. Nothing happened though. I used just one drop of the syrup, injecting it into the tank of amniotic fluid. This magical concoction initiates a process called retapification, where old trashy embarrassing cinema, once destroyed by a rusty tree saw, could come alive again to be enjoyed by a new generation of film fans. 
see this amazing and elusive process happen right before your eyes. I must now mail the tape back to the United States, where the RLM gang can enjoy this film they all regret destroying so long ago.